Welcome to N1 Engineering Science and this video we'll be looking at statics. If you haven't done so already, please remember to subscribe and like these videos. Here we have somebody pushing a large object. Now even if the wheel is not moving, there are still forces acting on both the wheel and the man. Isaac Newton has three laws. Newton's first law of motion states that a body will maintain its position of rest unless an external force acts upon it. Newton's second law states that the acceleration of an object equals the net force acting on the object divided by the object's mass. Newton's third law states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Here we have an equilibrium of force. We have 465 newtons east and 465 newtons west. Now when opposing forces have the same magnitude, they are considered to be at equilibrium with a zero resultant. Here we have three forces acting on an object, producing a resultant force of 30 newtons. We have 100 newtons driving force and we will subtract the 20 newtons air resistance and 50 newtons friction and that will give us a single force that will replace the system of forces. In terms of addition of parallel forces, when forces are in the same direction we add them. Here we have 50 newtons and 40 newtons pointing east and therefore we will add those together. And forces in the opposite direction we will subtract them. Therefore, the 90 newtons east, we will subtract the 30 newtons west. Just a reminder that forces acting directly east or north are considered positive, and forces acting directly west or south are considered negative. Let's do the calculation and find out what the resultant will be. So using this formula to calculate the resultant, we have a force east plus a force east minus the force west because it's pointing in the opposite direction therefore 50 plus 40 minus 30 will give us a resultant of 60 newtons in terms of addition of non-parallel forces forces acting on a point are represented by vectors of a parallelogram with a resultant force this illustration we have force one and force two and we would end up with a net force, which would be the resultant. Here we have a pulley system. There are two pulleys with three ropes, and we can uh, represent those ropes by vectors or forces. There are three weights suspended from the ropes. We have 700 grams, 3 kilograms, and 2,5 kilograms. Now, to calculate the force, it will be in the mass multiplied by the acceleration. Now the mass will be in kilograms and the acceleration will be 9,81. So force, first of all, the uh, force OA can be represented by 700 grams divided by 1,000 to give us kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of 9,81 and that gives us 6,86 newtons. Now the next force OB, we have 2.5 kilograms multiply by the acceleration of 9,81 and that gives us a force of 24,525 newtons. Then we have our force OC with 3 kilograms multiply by the acceleration of 9,81 and that gives us a force of 29,43 newtons. OC is the equilibrium of OA and OB. However, OD is the resultant of OA and OB. Determine graphically the resultant of two forces acting on a point as shown. So the letter O would be our reference point, uh, our force of OB at 50 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees and on the horizontal plane we have OA at 60 newtons. Let us use a scale of one millimeter is equal to 1 newton. If we simplify that further, we can say 10 newtons is equal to 1 centimeter. So on our ruler, we can work with centimeters. Starting at our reference point O, our first horizontal plane, our force OA, is 60 newtons, and therefore on the ruler it will be 6 centimeters. 
Then we'll use our protractor to try and determine 30 degree angle from the horizontal plane. We'll draw our line across and our next force will be OB. And that is 50 newtons. And that will give us five centimeters on our ruler. Now using a compass, we will stretch out our compass, place the point of the compass at O and the pencil at point A, and then we can draw our arc. Now draw an arc from point B. Then we take our compass and we put it back at our reference point O and the pencil at B and we draw our next arc. Now draw an arc from point A. And this will give us our reference line and our resultant. Draw a line from the point of reference through to the arc. Complete the parallelogram by drawing the lines OC, BC and AC. Now if we measure the length of the resultant, we'll find that it's, uh, just remember our scale of 10 newtons is equal to one centimeter. And we find that our resultant is 10,6 centimeters, which is 106 newtons. Now using our protractor to determine the angle of the resultant. And that will give us 15 degrees. Therefore the resultant OC is 106 newtons at an angle of 15 degrees. The triangle of forces, if three forces act on a point in equilibrium, they can be represented in sequence as a triangle. Here's our three forces acting on a point. We have 7,8 newtons, 14,7 newtons, and 19,6 newtons. Now, if we represent these forces as a triangle, we can represent as a triangle of forces. Bo's notion, but now forces in the equilibrium using a space diagram and a vector diagram. Okay, so yeah, we have three forces in a space diagram. We have space A starting in a clockwise direction, space A, space B, and space C. Now, as we move from space A to space B, and as we move from space B to space C, and as we move from space C, to space A, we'll be able to draw our diagram. Okay, the three forces are transferred to a vector diagram, and that is moving from space A to space B and to space C and then back to space A. Transferring a space diagram to a vector diagram, we have an unknown force of T, and we have 50 newtons at an angle of 45 degrees. And we have space A, space B, and space C. Let's start with the known force first. A 50 Newton force, which is uh, represented by CA. And the reason for that, let's call the known force of 50 Newton CA as we have moved from space C to space A. Now let's tr transfer the force M from space B to space A. And we'll call that M, and then the line represented is AB. Now let's transfer the force T from space B to space C. The system forces now make up a triangle and therefore are considered to be at equilibrium. Determine the magnitude of the unknown force T graphically using Bow's notation. So here we have a known force of 40 newtons at an angle of 20 degrees and a force of 50 newtons at an angle of 90 degrees. Force T is at an angle of 116 degrees. Let's first illustrate the space diagram by labeling the spaces in a clockwise direction. Here we have space A, space B, and space C. Now let's draw the vector diagram using a scale of one millimeter is equal to one Newton. First of all, let's draw a 40 Newton force 
using our scale of one millimeter equals one newton or alternatively one centimeter equals 10 newtons let's call this force a b as we have moved from space a to space b now we'll use our ruler to draw the 50 newton force which will be five centimeters and we're going to call this bc let's call the force t c a as we move from space c to space a now if we measure this line we'll find that it is 51 newtons let's look at some definitions for uh, lifting machines now a lifting machine is a device which allows a heavier load to be raised mechanical advantage is the ratio of the load to overcome when compared to the effort used to calculate the mechanical advantage it is the load divided by the effort the velocity ratio is the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load and to calculate the velocity ratio it is the effort distance over load distance here we have an example this is a lever a type of lifting machine this is the effort applied to the lever and the distance that the lever is moved by the effort this is the distance moved by the load let's look at a calculation a crowbar is used to raise a mass of 140 kilograms by 50 millimeters the distance through which the effort of 160 newtons moves to accomplish this is 0.5 meters determine the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio so to calculate the mechanical advantage we have the formula of load over effort our load of 140 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 to give us the force divided by the effort of 160 newtons and we have a mechanical advantage of 8.575 now to calculate the velocity ratio which is the effort moved divided by the load moved the effort moved is 0.5 meters and the load moved we would say 50 millimeters divided by a thousand and that would give us 0.05 and we end up with a velocity ratio of 10. Now, as a matter of interest, if we wanted to calculate the efficiency of the machine, we could say the output work divided by the input multiplied by 100. The output would be the load multiplied by the load distance, and the input would be the effort multiplied by the effort distance. Therefore, simply put, we could say the mechanical advantage over the velocity ratio would give us the efficiency.